I had 1906 Ach, 
اس کے یہ اخ یا خواب یا یا عشق تخ خے کے خخ یا خواب آیا تخ تاب یا سیاح خے یا کے یا خواب خنخ یا تیخ اس کے یہ تخ کا واتیخ سیاح چاؤ جس خا آن کے نے خس خاکان کچھ سے تھے وہ کا آوے اتا یہ اتر ساعت کے نوچ یا اشکاتا ہا اس کا سے اتا اتا یہ اتر ساعت کے نوچ جو اتا یہ اتر ساعت کے آیا یا یا تھے کہ تھے آیا یا فیم لے آیا حس تو خخن اتے آیا یا کنہ کھین آیا تھے نکھتے آیا تھے آواشون تو قاچا کے اتقا تھے سے کوکوتے آیا یا تو یہ داتے آ تو کھیک تو یہ قاکھو وشے تھے ہو آیا تو تھے سے کوکوت تھے کوکوت آیا یا کی کے آ وشچن کا تھا پتہ خطو شو کوشچن کا تھا بکان کتو شو کے اس تھے یا کی کے آ چایا نسقا خیا تو ہم خوحس کا یا کن نشین آیا تاک یا شاک آک آک ہا آیا او سکی نکا آیا چکے او سکو کس خاکان خسکی یہ چھن دے ہاں نکو تیس آدھے او نکتے ہاں یہ انک چکے چکے دو تی تی خی اتی خی اتی کو سکی تی یہ شو سنے که از خاندان کودی او که از که از شوا خیچ او خس خاکان جو شوا خیچ مطیقیت آو مطیقیت وسط تو یا که او خس خاکان آد خاو سیت او یا دکو که گویش تو ده گویش تو ده که آوا یا تو آنی ده تو هی ده اتلا آیه ده کان او کان خاو خاو خیال زنود و تو یان نیه اگی تا تو هیتی یه دنیش و کتوق سخان و یه دکه آوا و یانا تو آوا کو آوا تو دختر و کوته از کوته یا تیخ تیخ سان خاد اجتاع تو تی اخوی یانا اتو دختر کوته و تو چی تو چی خنر سخان خوش ایا یخ کی و هن کان خا تو تکان خا ای خیال نسینی تی نوی آشوا خیج تو آشوا خیج تو آشوا خیج تو آشوا خیج یخ یقا خوشی کو ای خو چاقیا خوس خوان هنیک دن کو ای خو تسلی اخون خو هسیا تخن خا و چاق واس کت سگر سلی کت سو سو نیک دن قنیت خا یک اشکته تو دید خو آنکه که خسکانه ای خواه شود تا آنک که کد آوا خود و کان کد آوا خود و خسکان که چه سکته آیه تی آوا که ساتان کختو داشت واسه کی سکته سنه خسکان که کته ای چه ساتان کختو داشت خی آوا اوسی او و کس خاکان کشته ای او اوسی او خواهی خیلی او تاکا خوشته اچه او تاکا خوشته که که کجای خواهی خوشتی کس خاکان خوشته یه سه سو او تاک که او بتوانی که یا خشی یا کوک که خوشته یه او یه او او ته دکه آن کار و یاسن کتانه، او سیخ خن خاو سیخن، هیاسن کتانه که آتی، که آیا چیاسن کتانه که چیاسن کتانه چیا و سیخ یا تاکا، اجیا یه اتاش کس نیم، خودشته آیا هاتیه آیا تسلان، تسلان یا آتن تو ون آیا یا Careful cross, you do a sack, ya, 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 go to a day and a na a day. A hunk, ya, ya, do a sack, tassel, 
aya shiyatehen ha shiyatehen akcha yeso aye haya se akhen ki us khase ak ye ayan khatan ya itat ya akyat sekin khasne se ta khen ak I do think that was recorded by Nish and Story, but let me let me check. So I'll show you folks. Um, oops, right there. I'll show you folks uh, where you can find that story in case. Um, hold on, let me open it. I'm not able to talk and type at the same time today. So this is Hashuka. Uh, it's a collection of Tlingit stories. Wonderful. And we got to start talking about this stuff as we start moving towards winter break. Because sure, take a break, but don't leave the language out in the cold. So one of the ways you can do that is by using a text like this. So there's a table of contents. We get into the narratives. And here is Tanka. So here's, it's typed up. There are a few things we'd probably type a little differently today, and they're not mistakes. They're just, we just do things a little different. And um, anytime you, even if you worked on something for a hundred hours and you thought you got it just right, as soon as you played it in front of people, you'd probably catch five things that you'd like to do differently. So it's just how it goes. Uh, so you can read it here, and we are. Uh, talking about retype, I have a retype of this one as well, and I'll show you. You can find it in that Shkashnik folder. You go to Klinkit Curriculum, Shkashnik, and then under Hashuka, I think it's in there. But you can also go into the notes here, and we can look at um, Mosquito. Oh, so it was recorded by Ayohne. So we see recorded by Nora Downhauer and Goon, July 1971. And I think I asked her, I was like, what? Why are the kids cheering? Are they real happy because you drug it on the fire? And she said, no, there's like a basketball game going on next door. And then you heard, like, somebody must have won the game, and then they opened the door, so all these kids come pouring out of the gym. I kind of like the idea that they're all so excited about the story. It is one of the early stories that they worked on. Prior to the 1970s, you didn't really have a lot of line-by-line line transcription and translation. So a transcription is the word we'd use to say, write down all of the shingit, and then translation is how you'd say, okay, translate that into English. Uh, the way that they translate is probably different than the way that I would typically translate. Uh, I tend to try and stick a little bit more like line-by-line line translation, trying to stick, you know, and, and it's always a thing like as you folks keep going, you might become translators yourself. Then you, what do you do with awe? Right? Awe, awe, awe. I would usually just skip it. But sometimes I might say that is, or well. Um, and then you'd say that my boat in at guide. You uh, do sagen used to be called. It's inside at. That is. At around that place, I always boated, right? Or I, I always boat. And then we have saying, right? And so, in terms of like how you would take care of that, if you go down to what they wrote, it was in this boat of mine, it was called Guide. I would travel around in it, saying. So, when the Downhowers were doing this work, I would say they're, they really wanted to show how the stuff would translate so that it could be a learning tool. But they also wanted to advocate for the elevation of Tlingit literature to say, like, this is just as valuable as any literature in the whole world. Uh, because especially in the 1970s, that was certainly not the idea. So this stuff was not typically in a lot of schools. It certainly wasn't commonly taught. Uh, but even today, like, if I just went to the graduating class, um, and if I said, okay, one by one, every one of you 300 kids from Juno Douglas High School or Thunder Mountain, tell me the mosquito story. If you can't tell it, you can't graduate, right? Like, I don't know how many kids would graduate, right? Because even though there, we've come a lot further, 
it's still a pretty selected part of the curriculum. I think it's getting more and more standardized. But um, anyways, any thoughts before we look at it in a little bit closer detail? Yes, Angoon is very dedicated to basketball. That's right. The, the cannibal could probably be like messing around with people right next door. Be like, there's a game. We'll take care of the cannibal after the game. OK, so let me move this over. So here we go, a similar structure. But now we're going to go kind of line by line and go through this thing. OK, and then we'll see. We're getting close to break time. And this isn't, we won't get to the whole story because the whole story is not done yet. But the idea is someday, maybe in my 50s, I'll finish this slideshow. And the idea is it goes one sentence at a time where you can listen to Robert Zuboff say it twice, then we'll look at the sentence, then one of you will read it after just listening to him say it. So he's like your voice coach. And then you try to read it sounding a lot like Shaw Dog. So we're going to try and mimic Shaw Dog. And then we'll go through and we'll show an expanded version of that and all the parts that are there that will be color coded for you. So this is Shaw Dog right here on the left. This is Basket Bay here on the right. He was born in 1893 and he passed away in 1974. So it's certainly a bridge to a different time. Um, he was Dr. Wiedi Yeti, and his English name was Robert Zuboff. A lot of people call him Bob Zuboff. So when we get into analyzing this story, now I'm going to show you a color-coded language, which I think we've looked at a little bit. Advanced Klingit is just full on into this right now, really getting into the weeds of this area in particular. But if you were to sort of visualize a Klingit verb, and the verb is the heart of the language. Once you've got the verbs, you can speak Klingit. If you don't have the verbs, you can't speak. You could just say things that you have memorized. And that's not to say people can't. It's just saying you're going to have to get here at some point, I think, whether you figure it out naturally or whether you sort of learn through these structured methods that, that we're trying to show folks. So everything is color-coded here. And then when we pull it apart, we'll assign these colors to it. Somebody asked me yesterday, I said, are the colors set in stone? I was like, I don't know, it's pretty close. Although the subject, this, I'll have to update this because the subject is now red. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about what each of these things do. And you, over the next year and a half, as you sort of finalize all your studies here, although there's plenty of people who just keep taking advanced Schengen, they just take every, you know, just to have someone to talk to, or just to keep learning stuff, right? And it's very cool because then you have people who, who could say a lot of things who just keep taking the class. But what we look at here is we go left to right with the left being the first things that you would hear or say. Okay. We're going to start talking about things that are connected to the verb and things that are disconnected, which means there'll be a separate word or it's all one word. The pre-verb is a word that appears before the verb that is, it's just a locked in part of the verb. You could not remove it without changing the whole way that that verb is working. Uh, and we'll talk about a lot of them. Some examples of what could be a pre-verb is to make something negative. How do you make a verb negative? Anybody know? What's the word you use? That place or tesh or hesh, right? So that's just the contracted all the way to the L. That pops up in the spot we call the pre-verb. Another thing could be motion, a day, a dach, a nach, a kina. Like those would all those affect the verb, and we'll learn exactly how later. Other things that could be here is to pluralize the third person, hus. So that could pop up here, right? Um, yay, k, different things like that. They're a separate word, but they are locked in as part of the verb. Then we get to the object. And what is the object? Thing we're talking about? Yes, it is a thing we're talking about. And it's the thing usually 
it's the thing that the verb is happening to. Right? So like for example, they, or let's say, Pete saw Carol. So Carol was the one that was seen, right? So that's the object of that verb. Pete saw, right? So he's the subject. So Klinget marks objects and subjects very specifically. It must go in this order. It must go object first, then subject. I took a linguistics class at the University of Hawaii and they said, most languages go subject, verb, object. Some of them go subject, object, verb. And 0% of them go object, subject, verb. I was like, hey, we're not 0%. What the hell are you talking about? Give us 1%, right? Um, so it is unusual for a language to do the object first. But that's how Schengen does it. So just like as you think about this stuff, be like, the cat ate the mouse. So you'd say, mouse, cat, ate. Right? So that's the order it would go in. Right? I saw her. Her, I saw. Right? It always has to go that. So that's where you get like him, her, them, me, you, us, uh, you all, whom. Those would all be objects. There are times that Klinget uses an object verb where English would probably use a subject verb. For example, state verbs. And for state verbs in English, you don't say me strong. But in Tlingit, you kind of do. So like you're the perfect Hollywood stereotyped Native American, right? Uh, so Tlingit does, and there are times unusually where you use an object that is the subject. And so then you get into some also some really different things. Like when you say, Anybody know what that means? I forgot. I forgot. That is an object pronoun. So you could sort of argue that forgetting happened to me, right? So then you have a subject over here, and this is the one, this is the doer of the verb, right? So these are some things that you say, khat isakhan, me, you love. Ich sikhan, ich kha sikhan, you, I love, right? So one of the things we will learn how to do is how to switch the object and switch the subject. A lot of times we'll just do them one at a time. Like, let's just look at the objects and change them a whole bunch. Let's look at the subjects and change them a whole bunch. Then we'll go through and say, let's change them at the same time. I love you. I love y'all. I love them. I love them all. I love people. I love something. You love me, you love us, right? And so you just start going through those types of things. We're going to do a whole bunch of those exercises, and I'm going to give you resources so you can just sort of read it off of the list, but then you start to internalize that stuff because there's only so many things. But Tlingit is made up of all these parts, and there are things in these parts. So I'll go pretty quick over the next ones. Thematic is where you could put a noun onto a verb. It's basically what you're doing. So you could put a head on a verb, a mouth on a verb, face on a verb, inside on a verb. You could put all those things, a bunch of different things on a verb. Uh, and so you'll see those. The most common ones are the horizontal surface and the vertical surface. Ka and ya. Ka and ya. Uh, and so if you add a thematic prefix, so you have a new verb. That makes a new verb. The conjugation, this is where everything happens to start moving the verb from is that way, was that way, isn't that way, wasn't that way, will be that way, won't be that way. Anytime you're starting to shift with stuff like that, it's all going to happen. Like most everything will happen right here, and there will be some things over here, like clash. So for negative, you'd have clash here, you'd have this little uh sound right here, then the classifier would do something specifically. Now you got a negative, right? And we'll look at we'll look at all of this stuff. I'm not expecting you to know it. Uh, and then we get the subject, the one who does it, the classifier, which is an organizational structure for the verb. It's how you create new verbs. That's how you marked whether or not it has happened. And it's also where you can mark things like middle voice or sometimes kicking the object out. And we'll also look at that more. But for now, I want you to know that these things exist, 
And as we go through this story, we're going to start to look at them just like, hey, look at how this works. Hey, look at this thing. It's right there. And then we're going to go through, we won't get too deep into it because we only got a couple weeks left. But next semester, we're going to start walking through all of the parts of the verb. And then in advanced Klingit, we try to split our time between just speaking Klingit and then continuing advanced grammar study. Every verb has a stem, and the stem is made up of, okay, there's a root and a stem. Everybody know how they're kind of different? It's the only thing we've talked about yet. The root contains meaning, like teen has to do with sight. The stem says, what is the vowel doing? Because you could have tin, teen, or teen. So you can be short and high, long and high, long and low. Those are your three options. And it will move. Right? So for example, uh, I could say, I saw it. I could say, I will see it. Then I could say, Khashatin, I am watching it. So we'll learn how that stuff, it's, a, it's all predictable, but you've got like a bunch of moving parts. There'll be stuff that pop up in the conjugation prefix. There'll be things that the classifier does, and then that will, and then there'll be the stem. There's, there's a few more parts than that, but that's basically everything that you need to know about a verb to get started using that. How did you come up with the color scheme? What does it do? The different colors mean something in your brain? In no. Your, in your brain? Or no. Not? I was just trying to pick some. I can't remember. I did change the subject to red at some point. I don't remember. I think just trying to pick some like clinget looking colors a little bit, so like I could have not quite a nakin te because it's um, a little too hard to see maybe. So just a little bit more of a blue, and then a red over here. But then the rest, I was like, I don't know, that'll be pink, that'll be gray, that'll be whatever. And then there's so many parts, they start running out of colors, too. <clears throat> and then these are, these are the, um, they're always in this order. Yeah. Pretty much, right? They're always going to be, appear in this order, so. They will. And then when you get into advanced Thinget, we start looking at it in a bit more of a detailed view. So now we say, okay, now we were done. We taught you how to play with blocks, but now these blocks have like a million components inside. Now let's take a look at them, right? So what we do is we go through and sort of make sure, and this isn't everything. There's more things than this. But what I try to do is say like, these are the essentials. These are the most common things. You need to know these ones, and then you'll learn others. Because the whole goal is to just become conversational so that you can just focus on speaking Klingit and then you'll start learning that, oh, there's, I didn't know that there was that one. Oh, there's this one. You know, because there, there's one of these things, which means to deliver news. So you can say, would you hear? Way day would you hear? They ran that way. Way day tau jahih. They ran that way to go tell the people. Whatever. Right? Um, yeah. That's probably, and, then, and then there's the post verb, which we won't talk about right now. And I think we should take our break, uh, come back in five, and then we'll start walking through the story and seeing this stuff. Uh, the story that you just heard, and we'll start pulling it apart so you can see how it works and start thinking about everything that's under the hood. Okay, Mishish. Okay, okay, Yechid, you had a great suggestion, which was to potentially shift to a rainbow sort of gradient so you could just have sort of have the colors of the rainbow so you have a system that sort of makes sense in terms of like the colors and that could probably help people memorize which ones kind of go in which spot because then you just get the order of the colors so mm -hmm. that would make a lot of sense it would um it would be a lot of work nothing's like really been published with this color scheme yet it's all sort of in a draft form but the board game has come out already. But also, like, there's no instructions for the board game, so no one knows how to do it anyway. So, <laughs> um, I I do think 
Achtuch would Hachish. I think it's possible. I think it makes a lot of sense. And then what I was saying um, right before we came back from break is also some of these, like, so the way some of this stuff works, like, so here, uh, this one for now is pink. If we get in here, we see one, two, three, four. Why would there be little numbers in there? Uh, second, third person? And Not quite person, right? But it is, there's an order to it. Oh, am I sharing the screen? Do you folks see this online? Uh, okay. uh. Any other guesses? Why would there be one, two, three, four? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I let's see. You, you can have more than one? You can have four, right? And so the way that this stuff works, it's like, I like to think of it almost like, like the slot machine metaphor. Like, okay, it could be a cherry, and it could be a crown, and it could be a coin. Whatever it is, that slot is locked up. So this could be a k or k, not both. You could pick from one of these, not two of them. You could pick from these two, and then you have that. Right? So you can have four. It'd be very rare. Um, so some verbs have two, some have three. I think sh ek shakaute nash is the verb that has the most that I know of, which is they wave their finger like that. Um, um, in the two section, they can have two or can't have two? No, that's just saying slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, in which oh. order they go in, pick one. But you also don't have to have one. Okay. So it is, there are sort of systems within the systems as well. So even when you sort of come zoom out to here, we're saying, yes, this is how this is a visual representation of how the verb works. But then you're going to dive in and look at that other stuff. Like for conjugating, there's only these things, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven things. And you're only ever going to get, I think, two. I don't think you'll ever get more than two. So these work a little bit differently. But like whenever we've been talking about perfective, right? So you say like, um, wook a, it was good. That's this thing right here. Y plus y gets you woo. That's how it works, right? So the other thing that we'll sort of look at is how do they contract? How do they, what happens when you put this next to this? Oh, you get that thing. What if you have this, this, and this? Oh, you get that thing, right? And so. The other thing we start doing as we start moving from what we teach in intermediate to advanced is sort of like saying, here's all the patterns, right? For example, and we're jumping ahead here, which is fine. This is uh, without any thematic prefix, this is all of your prefix combinations for a perfective verb, right? So for example, Chwasaku. What does chwasaku translate to? I know. I know it. Right here, gang. Drop the it, but I know it. So then here we got first person singular, first person plural, second person singular, second person plural, third person, third person with a third person object, fourth person. So thinking of that, if chwasaku is I know, what do you think Watusaku is? Um. We, know? we know it. We know it. <laughs> what about Yisaku? They know it. Oh, that's a second person singular. So let's just go through them. Yes, you know it. Second person plural, Yisaku. No. Y'all know it. This one you gotta jump down to here. Ausaku. They know it. Wududzaku. We all? No. Not we all. It is known. 
So this, the, the fourth person is a really interesting thing because I think for translating it, you kind of get one of two options. Like it is that way or people do it. So for, and here's another one. So once you see, this, so you can have these charts, right? Once you've got a verb and you know what it sounds like in the perfective, right? What, anybody know what chua would be? I ate it. I ate it. What about watu wacha? We ate it. Iyacha. You ate it. Yicha. Y'all ate it. Y'all ate it. Awacha. They ate it. They ate it. What do we have? It is eaten. It was. It was eaten. Yuck ass. So like, step one is like you can look at these tables, right? We've got these tables in plenty of different places. I'll start showing you. I'll put. I'll put. I could put this whole slideshow up there. It's not a problem. Um, I just don't want you to get too buried in the weeds with some of this stuff. So I'll also put like a screenshot of, of this one up, if I remember. Maybe I'll just take the screen. I'll take the screenshot and see what happens. The memory is very interesting this time of year. Um, OK, let's do one more. I'm going to try to pick a verb. What's a verb I think you guys might know? OK, we did hwasaku, hwacha. If you don't know, it's okay. Khwashishat. And technically, all these verbs we've done could translate as them. I like, caught it. Or I caught it. I, well, khwashat would be I caught it. Khwashishat would be I grabbed it. I grasped it. I grabbed it. So, what is shot? I grabbed it. What took the shot? We grabbed it. Yes, the shot. You grabbed it. Yes, the shot. Y'all grabbed it. Out the shot. They grabbed it. What took the shot? It was grabbed. So, I think one of the steps is sort of like, oh, this is how it works. Cool. So now you can like go to this chart. Uh, there's different versions of this chart that's out there. This one is all sort of it's there for you with like every classifier and person combination in terms of subject. The next step is learning all the parts that go in there so that you don't have to memorize it. You know what those parts are and how they interact with each other. So that's the sort of learning process that I sort of try to use to teach people. Uh, the other thing is, it's like sort of like, here's a little secret. This is what we call a zero classifier. One of the very common patterns in Tlingit is you have zero and everything else. So what do I mean by that? So here you have, this is ya. So you go down, you have hua, watua, uh, in this case, iya, sometimes yi, yi, wu, or uwa. Awa would do what. But if you look at the other ones, di, si, zi, chli, gli, shi, ji. And if you look at all of these right here, whatever's right before that classifier is exactly the same. Hua, 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 hua. So then, wutu, wutu, wutu. So the only thing that's changing. Is the classifier. And what's interesting with these is then if you look, they all end with I. So technically, the only thing that's changing is that consonant. D, S, D, Z, L, D, L, S, H, J. That is how it works, right? So I think the first step is looking at tables like this, knowing they exist, and being like, okay, well, I know that verb is um, 
chwasatine, but what if y'all saw it? Oh, ye satine. I could look it up right here, plug it into where the chwasa was. Okay. I feel like we're deep in the weeds. Any questions before we go back to our story? It's a sneak preview. Your future is full of conversations like this. But for now, back to story time. So the idea here, we listen to Shah Dog say the sentence twice. We won't see it, so I don't want you to read it. I want you to listen to it. Then we'll look at the text, and one of you will read it and do your best to sound like the way you heard it. Think about the, the pace, focus on the tone, how one word goes and how does it go into the next one? Does it stop? Does it combine? And then we'll pull it apart. Here we go. Our work here, go yet, guide you to Sagan, a yiktawat nakaka, a stale. Our work here, 